price coordinates preview coordinates obsession in this review is probability distributions and why probability distributions one thing you have to note is that um, having random variables or just knowing random variables is not enough to make any valid inference okay um, let me quickly show this you just knowing the number of electronic components which have been defective is not enough to make any valid inference in order to um, add meaning or make random variables more meaningful we have to take into consideration its probability distribution okay so what is a probability distribution a probability distribution is a description of the probabilities associated with the possible values of the random variable okay now the description can come in the form of a table formula or a graph okay so for example the probability distribution for the one for the number of defective electronic component x is given as shown below so basically we are trying to get a probability distribution for this random variable x okay from our previous tutorial so here we are looking at the number of electronic components which are defective and we have the possible values to be 0, 1, and 2. And this is the corresponding probability for, for 0, the probability is 1 out of 4. For the outcome 1, we have the probability to be 2 out of 4. And for the outcome 2, we have the probability to be 1 out of 4. Okay, so how do we obtain this? Uh, let me quickly show you here. So you can see that for the outcome 0, the element here is just one, so we just take one divided by the total number of elements in our sample space, which is four. For the outcome one, we have two elements, so we just take two and divide by the total number of elements in our sample space. And for the outcome two, right, we have element to be one in our sample space, so we just divide by the total number of elements so that we can obtain one out of four. Okay, so that so this is how um, we have these corresponding probabilities. Okay. All right, so now let's take a look at the types of probability distributions. We have two types. We want to take a look at the first type, which is the probability distribution for discrete random variables. This is known as the probability mass function, okay, or in short, P and F. So what is a probability mass function? A probability, a probability distribution for a discrete random variable X is called a probability mass function if it satisfies the following conditions. One, the probability for each outcome of the random variable should be non-negative, non okay? So this, for the probability mass function, we can have it expressed in this form, or we can also have it expressed in this form, okay? So this condition means that the probability for each outcome of the random variable should be non-negative. The second condition states that, um, if we are to add or sum the probability for each outcome of the random variable, it should um, sum to one, okay? The total should be one, okay? So let's take an example. We want to determine whether each of the following can serve as a probability mass function of a discrete random variable, okay? So we have A, B, and C. Let's start with the A. Okay, so now we are going to start with the first condition. We want to find out if um, the probability for each outcome is non-negative, okay? So when x is equal to one, let me quickly show the question so that you don't forget. So this is the question for A. So we want to replace each of this, I uh, want to test for the possible values of random variable to see if it is non-negative, okay? So we are starting with when x is one, f of one will be in this form. So we just replace the x by one and we obtain this. And we can say this one is negative. So since f of one is not greater than or equal to zero, it follows that this function is not a PMF, okay? All right, now let's take a look at the B part. So this is the um, question B part. G of x is equal to x plus one divided by 10, and we have the possible values to be zero, one, two, three. So let's start with the first condition. We want to find out if this is non negative, okay? The positive values for each random variable is non negative. So when x is equal to zero, g of zero is going to be in this form, okay? We replace x by zero, so we have zero plus one divided by 10. And then we obtain this, which is non negative. When x is one, g of one will be what? So we replace our x by one, so we have one plus one divided by 10. And this will give us 0 0.2, which is also non negative. When x is two, g of two will be two plus one, right, divided by 10. And this will also give us 0 0.3, which is non-negative. 
And when x is equal to 3, we have g of 3 to be in this form, which is also non negative. Okay. Now let's take a look at the second condition, which states that if you are to add or sum the probability for each outcome, it should be equal to 1. So let's take a look at this. So once we add this, and this, add this, and that, we have it here, and this is equal to 1. Okay. So since condition 1 and condition 2 are valid, it follows that g of x is a PMF or a probability mass function, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the C part of this question. So this is the question, right? So h of t is equal to 1 out of 20 t squared, where t runs from 1 to 4. So let's start with the first condition, one to find out if each outcome of the random variable is non-negative. So when t is 1, h of 1 will be in this form, right? And this will be no negative. When t is 2, we also have this. And this is also no negative. When t is 3, we have h of 3 to be in this form, which is also no negative. Okay. So when t is 4, h of 4 is also no negative. Now let's take a look at the second condition. So if you are to add all of these probabilities, we can say that this is not equal to 1. So since condition two is invalid, it follows that h of t is not a PMF, okay? So this is basically how to test um, for the PMF, okay? Whether a function is a PMF or not. So let's take a look at the second example. The following table gives the probability distribution of a random variable y. I want to find the value of the constant k from this. And also we want to find the probability that the random variable lies between this interval and also the probability that the random variable is greater than or equal to two. Okay. All right. So with the first um, question, we want to find the value of the constant k. We can actually use the condition, the second condition of PMF to get this because we know that if you have to sum all of these probabilities, it should be equal to one. Okay. So uh, let's use that identity to obtain the value of the constant k. So test for condition two, we know that if you have to sum all the probabilities for each outcome of the random variable, we should be equal to one. So we have this, okay? So this is the probability for the first um, outcome. And we have the second outcome, third outcome, and fourth outcome, okay? So once we add all these values, we get seven out of eight. We have our k here, and we also have our one on the other side. So once we make k the subject, we obtain this, and now k is 1 out of 8, okay? So we can replace, um, we can replace um, k by 1 out of 8, okay? So the second question, I want to find the probability that y lies between this interval 0 and 2. So let's see. So we have 0 here. We don't have any value in 2. So the only value that lies between, because this is discrete, the value of the random variable that lies between zero and two is just this, okay? So let's take a look at the solution for the B part I. So the probability that Y lies between zero and two is probability that Y is equal to one, okay? And this is similar to one out of four, okay? It's just going to be this one, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the I. I want to find a probability that Y is greater than or equal to two. So let's take a look at the table. So we can have um, we can have um, two, three, and four. Okay, because we are looking at probability that y is greater than or equal to two. So we can have two, three, and four. So we are just going to take these probabilities. Now we know our case one out of eight. We have three to be uh, one out of two and one out of eight. Okay, so this is going to be the solution. And that okay. So the probability for y being equal to 2 is 1 out of 8. And that of y being equal to 3 is 1 out of 2. And y being equal to 4 is 1 out of 8. So once you add all this, um, once you sum all of this, you get 3 out of 4, okay? Which is very quite simple. So um, this is going to be a trial question. I'm going to leave a solution in the description of this video so you can check it out. Please don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.